Many people have been talking about quantum computers as if they would surpass or even replace electronic computers called kinetic computers in the near future. The best experts in the world believe that in the next decade, we will begin to see real advancements towards building the first scale quantum computer. Quantum computing is reaching an inflection point. So they don't double every 18 months like Moore's law in the classical space. Mm -hmm. They could move forward by 240 million times, for example. That's the difference between our system. But this is illusion. Today, I'm going to explain to you the physical limitation inherited in all quantum computing research and development activities, namely the lifetime of quantum coherence, based on my research background in electrospin magnetic resonance. No matter what you do, a prospective student in quantum computing, a quantum trade broker, or a savvy investor, I hope this talk will provide some rational insights into the current hype. Let's go and have fun. One technique that creates coherent superposition of quantum states, known as qubit, is based on quantum tunneling of the Cooper pairs of electrons across the Josephson junction. Unlike conventional electronic computers, nevertheless, the computation time by a quantum computer is limited by the lifetime of coherent quantum states. Why? Because coherent quantum states, or qubit, are transient. Once they are created, they decay and then disappear exponentially. In recent years, the mean lifetime of such coherent states has been increased from about 1 to 200 microseconds. By removing a number of interactions and by reducing the temperature almost to the absolute zero Kelvin, the lowest temperature in the universe, I am sure many investors have no idea about how it can be done in terms of cost and space. Such improvements have given many people some statistical confidence that quantum computers may surpass electronic computers in a few decades. Unfortunately, this may well not be the case. So far, people's attention has been disproportionately drawn to the impressive growth some even call it as a double exponential growth of the number of qubits from just two in 1998 to over 1,000 today. But this is not a big deal. Why? Because the number of qubits should be over several millions to make a quantum computing practically useful. Given the maximum coherence time, that IBM and Google or any other companies have achieved so far. In other words, you should consider the product of the two numbers instead of their sum. In fact, many people don't know the journey to enhance the coherence time, although it was called as relaxation time in old days, had begun as early as 1948 when nuclear magnetic resonance was discovered independently by Bloch and a team called BPP with the three members, Bloombergen, Purcell, and Pound. They observed that the longer the relaxation time, the sharper the NMR peak would be. A simple equation was introduced to describe three different relaxation time as shown here which has been used in studying coherence lifetime today. One of the methods to make relaxation time longer in magnetic resonance is to reduce the sample temperature. That's why I had routinely used liquid helium to run my electron spin resonance experiments under 4 Kelvin, but never below 1.7 K zone. Another method is to dilute the spins 
electronic or nuclear in a sample, or even to isolate a single spin from his hyperfine interaction coupling with the surrounding nuclei. So far as I observed, almost all possible methods to increase the coherence time has been exhausted in line with these two general methods. In particular, the state-of-the-art cryogenics that money can buy has been used to achieve and maintain the mini Kelvin temperature range, such as the nether cooling and nuclear adiabatic demagnetization. The equipment setup could occupy your entire house without a roof. At the most, one could imagine a QPU hardware would be as small as a patient in an ICU in the hospital, but with far more cables or coaxis cables for control and readout with RF or microwave pulses. By way of contrast, apparently, no such physical limit exists in electronic computers or classical computers at all. An electronic computer can run a calculation for hours or even days, depending on what you want to calculate. I recently talked to a Grok. Historically, transformative scientific breakthroughs driven purely by financial investment or class action efforts are rare, often falling short of expectation due to the complex incremental nature limits. Here's what Grok replied. You're drawing a parallel to quantum computing, where the current wave of investment and enthusiasm, fueled by promises of practical benefits, mirrors past cycles like high TC superconductors and nanotechnology, as we discussed. Given the technical challenges in transmon superconducting qubits, Quantum computing may indeed follow a similar path of unpredicted outcomes, rather than rapid, money-driven revolutions. To summarize briefly, unlike currently used electronic computers, quantum computing time is inevitably confined to the coherence lifetime. So far, it would appear almost all of the methods we know have been exhausted in delaying the wave function collapse. If you like this talk, please let me know so that I will prepare more talks in the future. See you next time. The blue curve is theoretically calculated, which is to be explained soon. As you can see, the coordinates of the three planets, namely Mars, Earth, and Venus, can be quantitatively predicted. Is that beautiful? I remember my teacher said, Newton was merely puzzled by the first push because he believed that his mechanics to fix the fundamental problems of the standard model, isn't it? The air. Let's remember C.G. Ozawa, my favorite conductor, who created a joy Arrhenius claims in CO2 my CO2 is the chief absorbent on his paper, page 260 without any direct experimental evidence, such as this one demonstrated with this uh, Newton's cradle. As you can see, something must have been transferred among the metal balls. But what is this something?